Alright guys, have to cry back again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far with scrims unplayable over the last few days in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. How were the teams shaking up before everything went wrong in this particular game? Optic Texas reckon that yeah, they were looking okay, but certainly an awful lot to work on. But Dashi reckons that Skump was the man that was completely frying behind the scenes. Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Firstly, look at this here on Fortress. This is a beautiful jump spot or idea. So I don't exactly know how this works it's like a dolphin dive jump and if you get the timing right you can make crazy jumps like this now we saw the other day at the end of one of the videos Doug said to Martin was trying to make this jump the easy way and couldn't make it happen whereas this guy makes this jump the hard way with the dolphin dive like bounce jump thing with the jump up like that is awesome to be honest it's cool that this is possible in my opinion and um there's many other examples of this that kind of jake lucky points out I mean if you can do this right here on top of the statue I mean look at it from this guy's point of view it's actually crazy that you can go back and forth like this now, um, you know, some pros are down for this. Some pros think this is too, well, powerful, right? Because, I mean, look, the fact that you can do this is kind of outrageous. Like, if Shotzi gets good at this, which I'm sure he will, and he was hitting that pretty consistently there, and this is not Shotzi. Like, this guy's obviously pretty good at the movements, but he's not Shotzi. So if you could hit this every single time, like, I don't know what the gameplay is going to look like anymore if people are doing this out of every single window. Now, um, you know, Doug reckons patch this Infinity Ward. So, look, we'll see what Infinity Ward decide to do. I would hope they've got better priorities than this right now. There are other things they need to fix about the game certainly for the CDL sides but um look they got rid of the bunny hopping early on when that was in the beta they just got rid of it the slide cancel they very clearly tried to get rid of as much as they possibly can so um I wouldn't be surprised if any sort of a kind of advanced movement like this they try and get rid of as well but if they get rid of this there might be again something else they can do I mean yeah look at this shot this guy hits right here on the shoot house like just bounces out the window and just smokes this guy across the map so um yeah crazy stuff wanted to mention this as well which I thought was a really interesting thing which does make sense what the developers are doing here they've got this whole World Cup kind of like activation thing going on there like Pogba and Neymar and Messi whatever were actually in the game but um you can apparently predict in the game like we're going to be able to predict who wins the World Cup for rewards in the game itself but of course you can't do this for the CDL now you can do it online in the pickums and stuff but it's like um and look obviously the World Cup is a rather bigger deal than competitive Call of Duty but at the end of the day it's kind of frustrating but maybe also you know marginally positive that if they have this feature to actually make this happen in the game then they could theoretically at some point make this happen for the CDL as well, which would be really interesting. You could get rewards by predicting who's going to win certain matches in game. Like that'd be fantastic. Like um, it would really open the CDL up to more doors and more horizons. But I'm sure they won't bother doing it, and they'll just use this feature for the World Cup. It seems. But um, yeah. Nonetheless, it is kind of hilarious that this is actually a thing. Quick note on this, because still some people are wondering for good reason. Where is the CDL going to be for the upcoming season? We're two weeks away, and we've been distracted by other things. But is it going to be YouTube? Is it going to be Twitch? What's going on now? Curtis points out to me here that on blizzard for quite a long time there's been a job posting for a youtube and twitch channel manager now i looked into this and it actually specifies in the job description that um they're looking for one in warcraft and hearthstone to so not call a duty but it does say with opportunities to expand to other titles for you know both youtube and kind of um you know twitch management effectively so yeah don't know what you guys think about that because we don't know for now what's going on they've just said warcraft and hearthstone for now but um yeah i do wonder right because if there was a youtube and twitch channel manager required for Call of Duty, then that probably means they want to go back to Twitch, or at least we'll be doing that in part. Not the case as of yet. Quick note as well on the disaster class of Modern Warfare 2 at the moment, because the funny thing is, if the pros have to play on normal rules, they can theoretically change the rules to their liking, theoretically. Obviously, when you go to an actual CDL match, it might be a different story, but um, you know, as Hit says, might as well put their health up to 130, because if it's not in the CDL rules, but the CDL rules aren't in the game, then what's to stop the pros kind of messing around with that, potentially? So um, I mean, yeah, as a Hitch says, I guarantee if you did it, they wouldn't care. But even Scrubby says that's the last thing that needs to get changed at the, at the moment, right? And even this from Envoy. So I don't know if they've been told about this. I imagine they might have been from certain sources in the league, because I think maybe Parasite implied this as well, or maybe it was Sasha, that the pros have been told to some degree that, yeah, red dots on the mirror are not coming back. Like, this is a final decision, apparently, by Infinity Ward, that that setting is not going to be even allowed in custom games. Like, it's so remarkable they did do this. Like, why does it matter? You do what you want in pubs. Like, 
like, I don't really care. It's bad that there's no red dots in pubs, but it is what it is. At least have the option in private matches. But apparently it's never arriving because Zonvoy says they're playing without red dots for the whole year and there's like no leeway on this from Infinity Ward. So, I mean, yeah, man, it's going to be a long wait until Trek's title, no doubt. That's all Octane's waiting for as well. Here he says, you know, Trek, please come back to save the boys. And um, yeah, as he says about Modern Warfare 2, look, I'm in the 100 Thieves Hall of Fame, but I don't know how to code the game and fix it, unfortunately. So yeah, tough scenes for all involved. Now, quick note on this. There's this kind of 100k Warzone 2 tournament that Optic Texas are running. Karma is one of the captains, so pretty exciting stuff. But the main Optic team, of course, they've been scrimming. They've been having, I would say, mixed results over the past couple of weeks. What we saw in practice, they looked good on occasion, not so good on other occasions. And to my understanding, in terms of, um, I believe Easy Mac went through and did a coaches poll with uh, the coaches of the team, so kind of rank the team order. So it gives a good idea of how the teams are looking behind the scenes. It's very tight-knit. I think we'll see this potentially today or tomorrow. We might do a whole video talking about it. But it's FaZe and Thieves near the top, and then it's super closely matched between the Optic guys, Vegas Legion, Toronto, Minnesota, Seattle. Might be one more I'm forgetting as well. Maybe New York, I'm not exactly sure. But like um, a load of those teams are so closely knit in terms of how the coaches see them being right now that Optic are kind of like at one of the midfield teams as it stands. And I think that maybe Optic fans would expect that based on what they saw on scrims in the first couple of weeks. And the thing is, we don't know how things have gone the last few days. The pros haven't been able to practice. And that's a key issue because as Rambo goes on to say here in this clip, like they have things to work on. The Optic guys are not like um, a great team right now. They're not playing fantastically well. They've got plenty of issues to deal with and they need to deal with those issues quickly, but they can't because the scrims aren't going on. So they've got the talent optic, but they've got some sort of concerns right now behind the scenes that Rambo feels. And um, yeah, he feels they need to get on top of this quickly as they possibly can. And right now they don't even have the chance to. But also Scump is seemingly absolutely locked in for this season and has been their standout during practice. I mean, we were playing, I would say we weren't necessarily playing bad, but I think we have a lot to work on. I mean, so does every other team, to be honest. It's just the game's at a stage in the year where it's so young, you're still trying to figure out what what the main ways of playing the game is and be more consistent in our teams. So, that being said, I mean, every team is practice, realistically. Oh, wow, I got smoked. It in, like, Dude! Like, we, haven't even, we haven't even gotten any game yet. Like, Dude, my bad. No shave November? Yeah. It applies to everywhere? Max. Can we get this guy locked? Well, this is Seth locked. It's just this isn't final. Like, ah, this is yeah. his last dance vibes. She's like, my pubes are so long. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I'm locked, yo. Uh, Wait, yo, Brandon. Oh, yeah. Yo, tell the chat how I've been in uh, practice lately. But yeah, no, like, this has become a diffy, but he's also been like, he hates me for it. And it must also be said, this break from scrims the last few days where things haven't even been playable is not good necessarily for the Optic guys, especially because of, you know, the likes of Dashi, right? We saw before the season began, Skump said to Dashi, look, I uninstalled Tarkov, you uninstalled Valorant, and let's get fully committed and locked into the game. And we obviously saw last season when Illy had to step away that, um, you know, the commitment levels from Dashi apparently, you know, stepped down during that period, and then Illy came back, and it could never quite get to the same level that it was before during Major 1 and the like. So obviously this is on a smaller scale, you would think, to Illy being out for quite a while. This should only be a few days. But as Dashi says, he's bored, you know, he's streaming Valorant, and it's like they maybe were fully committed, the Optic guys, for the first couple of weeks, really locked in to the cycle and improving in all this. But then all of a sudden, everything goes wrong for them, and now, you know, can Dashi get fully back into that mindset again? They probably can. It's early days, but it still means it takes them out of that rhythm, right? And some teams can get back into that rhythm easier than other teams and Optic was a team that once their rhythm was broken last season like um you know it collapsed kind of towards the end of the year so probably not the case here on a shorter level but just interesting to note regardless that um yeah it didn't exactly help them last year when they had to take kind of a break from practice with their normal team so yeah obviously early days Rambo does say that yeah he thinks they're solid right but it's not like they're bad necessarily in scrims but they've got many things to work on loads of teams have got loads of things to work on but as I say in terms of those power rankings Optic are not a clear top three team right now they're very much like kind of in the mixer right and honestly this game maybe it's just going to be super mixy there are i mean we saw this graphic here with the teams and i do think that a lot of these teams are pretty mid i think some of them have got better but i think some of them are not really impressive but i wouldn't be surprised at all if a lot of these teams are very competitive this year just because the game is not in the greatest state and what is the skill gap going to be like maybe not crazy at all right kind of like what we saw in vanguard previously so this is kind of like the standard scrim set that optic would have based on when we actually could see them when they were playing up against vegas kind of splitting 
interesting maps and stuff. So, yeah, what are you guys expecting from Optic this season? Have you, like, if you're Optic fans, are you confident that this team is going to turn it around? Because, yeah, I don't know what I'm really thinking early on here. It's tough to say which teams are the best. Phase and Thieves apparently have been the standout so far. And then all the other teams, like pretty much everyone else that you think would be good, Rocker, Ultra, Seattle, like even Vegas right now, but then Optic as well. Like they're all in that kind of super mixy midfield category where who knows who's going to be good, who knows who's going to be bad. And also you've got to think Major 1. There are four teams in the groups and only two of them get out of the groups after the GSL style bracket. And one of those teams, of course, is an amateur team. But from each group, there'll be one pro team that doesn't make it through, which is obviously pretty tough, right? But Optic finished last season, according to Enigma's kind of a ELO rankings, they finished them as the, the third highest team. They were kind of on a bit of a downhill trajectory, Optic, but they were still solid enough to get third on this list. Thieves actually ended up getting the highest ELO rating after winning the final two events. Makes sense to be fair. Phase second, Optic third, Seattle fourth. Then it was New York Ultra. And then it was the others that actually made the world championship that, uh, you know, fell down a little bit further. But yeah, what are you guys expecting this to look like for the upcoming season? But Rambo is not happy at all that they've got to take a break here from scrims because they have things to work on and they can't do that as it presently stands. And um, I mean, yeah, what do you guys think about Vanguard looking back on it? Because I know the way the Call of Duty cycle works. We always see every single year that, oh yeah, the game is terrible. And then after the game, the game's good again. I still do think Vanguard was an awful Call of Duty game. But to watch, like, I mean, look at that. He flies out the top window. There was some entertaining moments. You can't deny it. And um, I mean, yeah, I'm sure Optic are probably thinking, yeah, you know what, actually, Vanguard wasn't too bad. At least it was playable as it presently stands. A couple of things just as we talked about Skump there, right? Because obviously this game theoretically should suit Skump relatively well. It's, um, of course, look, Prime Skump could play whatever Call of Duty and be absolutely dominant. Advanced Warfare, Black Ops 3, that was certainly the case. But um, even in the more recent games, Skump's probably been better, and even maybe historically, on games that are a little bit more consistent, slower paced, you know, pre-aim heavy. When the SMG meta used to be, you know, pre-aim a little bit more, Skump was dominant in that situation. The last few years with the slide counts and everything, it's been a little bit of a different story. This year, it might be kind of back to a style like that, and that should suit Skump pretty well, and hopefully for his final year, at least, he can have a good, successful season. And just to look at this, which I thought was crazy historically from Brian Satter, SMG's only all-time highest KD at champs. Krim has the highest in Black Ops 2 when he was running a sub, but um, look, Advanced Warfare, Black Ops 3, Skum was the highest KD sub, even Infinite Warfare. So three years in a row, Skump had the highest or joint highest KD as an SMG in the tournament, and even in Cold War, he had the highest only a couple of years ago, where I think his season overall was pretty underrated. But very much enjoyed to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.